Hey everybody! Um, yep, yeah, it's me, Bill Chimera, and I am chilling with the ever famous, the amazing man himself, Palpatine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Hello, it's Internet. How are we all doing? <laughs> We're feeling festive, Christmas around the corner, and we've got exciting stuff. We've got early presents. <laughs> Are you excited to show your new these wonderful presents off to the world, Parker? Yeah, man, if I could see them. Well, I haven't turned them on yet. This is what the spoiler thing's all about. <laughs> oh, no, I don't see anything. <laughs> I see nothing. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're a Sith Lord. Fill the presents. Right. Yeah. Let's do this. Right. Okay, so we'll throw up the first one. So we've been I've been absolutely privileged by the Aegis Company to show off some awesome stuff at Parker and Aegis have teamed up to create a draft set for the new basically well, to go alongside. Well, it's your own little thing, isn't it? Actually, do you want to explain it? Well, let me explain it to the world because I'll just gibber on. So, what is this new set you and Aegis have teamed up to create? Um, yeah, so I was working with Aegis Creative Company um, to create Charitable Forces. Uh, it's a fan made draft set. Uh, it's not related to the Renewed Hope Committee, so don't get confused about that with, like, standard play. Um, the main mission of it is uh, for charity, so all the proceeds are going to Extra Life, uh, which works with the Texas Children's Hospital, I think. Um, so, yeah, it, its majority is, is, is to work for uh, charity, um, which is the main reason that I got on board with it. Um, and it, it just seems like a fun way to get people rolling dice and once we can kind of meet up physically, crack some old packs, get them open and can't get playing. <laughs> yeah, I know COVID's been a real uh, downer. <laughs> yeah, so. it's affected everyone everywhere. But I mean, you guys have obviously come up with a lot of your own time, obviously a lot of your own time drawing these amazing cards and you've come together to create, I mean... It's equal to the guys obviously doing the new Rear Hotel and all this stuff, but you guys come together and you made your own set. It's just as damn awesome. So, <laughs> and uh... yeah, the the idea of it being a draft set is so it doesn't have to worry about mixing with official play. Um, you can just play it on your kitchen table and get your friends over and. It's awesome. Yeah, it's just, all these just booster... casual fan made stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you find all these booster boxes now that are going quite cheap. So I mean. It just goes along that so well right. and so easy. You're like, oh, yeah. I've got my set here, my draft set, and I've got a booster box, for like twenty dollars off Amazon. Do it. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, mate, I I couldn't be more excited to show these off. So should we start off with the first spoiler? Should we just go for it? Yeah, man. Let's just whack it up. Alright, so the first one we've got going is Alteria Motive. It's a yellow villain event. Nice. And it reads, re-roll one of your dice and one of your opponent's dice you choose. If those dice you just rolled, uh, uh, sorry, if the dice you just rolled have the same value, remove one. Now, the big thing here, it's a zero cost. So that's, that's pretty cool. That is very cool. So it's, it's got that whole hidden motive kind of feel to it. I mean, it's not far from the name, <laughs> but... Um, yeah. <laughs> the artwork's got more on it. Very nicely done, may I add. But um, yeah, it's got the whole. You try obviously you're rerolling an opponent's dice as the hidden, hidden motive. It's zero cost, and you're only re removing it though when the values are equal. So it has that nice. Well, hidden motive. You kind of got the opponent off whatever you wanted it to roll out, off of. Like so, you would say swords, try and get rid of it. This it still adds an element of chance the opponent could still roll back into damage. But then you've added that little bit underneath where if you roll like one of your own dice and you roll a gun and oh well, well it's just the same value isn't it it's not even the symbol if yeah it's just the same value that's yeah. that's awesome so like saw you can make him re-roll his dice and if you had indirect on one of your dice you can make him take a damage and then remove his dice if it had you rolled the indirect and he obviously would roll his indirect he's got four out of six chances so <laughs> It's pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, so I kind of equated in my mind to um, Nature's Charm, where it's the zero cost and you can re-roll two dice. 
Um, but then it's got that extra value of if it does roll the same uh, value, you can just get rid of theirs. Uh, but I like that it works where you can kind of do some soft mitigation on their side and then uh, some dice fixing on your own side if you roll garbage the first time. Yeah, I like that. I mean, the big thing to spot here, though, is it's not neutral. It is only villain. So mm -hmm. more is your cross villain love. <laughs> Going right next to that right, forsaken. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yellow. Now, I really approve of this because if you look at the yellow villain mitigation suite, it's not actually incredible as it stands right now. I think what you're looking at is what? Survival instincts is like probably your only zero cost. Yeah, I've been trying to be a little spicy and put that think on your feet card. Um, oh, yeah, there's that one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you don't have your merchant or your uh, improvised explosives, you're <laughs> kind of a dead card. So. Exactly. At least this is always playable. We roll one of your dice and your. Well, I guess you have to be as, rolled as long out. As you, you, have, you have to be in the pool at least. Yeah, so. so there is an action you have to waste to get into the pool. I think it's quite nice. I like it. I think, if a smart... I think it's fair for the cost. Like, zero cost is seems pretty good. So. Yeah, it's not like going to instantly remove the dice, and there's still a chance the opponent could roll back in design. And it also gives you a free reroll in an action, like, without having to waste an action. Like, you're affecting the opponent's dice, and you're rerolling your own if you have something bad to roll in something good, you know? So, I like it. I mean, if you look at things like pulse cannons, which have four gun sides, you can, you can play around with it, and I like that. So... I think it's up there with me. I think I would definitely throw this into a, a Boba Dengar deck. <laughs> One who's cooking that up right now. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've never even heard of that. Who's Dengar? <laughs> well, I think summary, I like it. I like it. I think anything that's zero cost tends to go really well. And the fact that you just said it's kind of like the nature's charm of a reroll, but you've also got a slim chance of removal in there. Kind of like what Hidden Motive had in itself, too. It works really well. Uh, what was the? Yeah, I think that Aegis, Aegis was definitely trying to lean into the idea of like um, playing off of hidden motive, um, obviously with the name and uh, with the effect of being like a zero drop event. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So what? What was the motive behind using Mool as the art? Um, like I said, they wanted to stick with something that was an homage to hidden motive. Um, but they wanted it to be more yellow, so we had the, uh, the idea of Kira FaceTiming with Maul. Um, <laughs> so that kind of fit in with the yellow theme and everything. Nice. But Maul is such a fun character to draw. I've <laughs> done him so many times, it's, he's just such a cool character. Mate, you nail him every time. Like, even that, he looks blimmin' sinister. He's probably just sitting in a park somewhere, waiting for his burrito to come out. Oh, right, yeah. And he looks yeah, proper feed, sinister about feeding it. Feeding some pigeons, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick my burrito. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's jump on to the second one. Let's go speed it on. And our second one, Can't Escape. It's a one-cost blue villain event. It has remove one of your blue weapon upgrade dice showing damage, then deal that damage to a character, increasing its value by one. So... Straight off the bat, I'm going to say just because you're an awesome picture, it does feel kind of, has that kind of homage to the lightsaber throw. Like, mm -hmm. you're getting damage out of hand, it's a blue villain card, it, it feels like, like a lightsaber throw, but it's quite nice. This lets you resolve modifies that have, can obviously be used. So straight off the bat, you can remove right, a dice. Yeah. So if, if you got one of those big three, like plus three or plus four, it always feels so bad having to pass into the next round without using it. So this gives you the opportunity to get value from it and then additional value just from playing the card. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like, it's great for someone like Maul in my head because like, sometimes you just burn out the Maul with the reroll and then you have that weapon just sitting there Okay, let's yeah. go back to Legacy Era. Maul's lightsaber. This would be just an absolutely terrifying card if it comes to infinite or you play the Legacy block. Because <laughs> obviously, this is a kit met with the mind of drafting, so people would probably draft the right, Legacy block. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you've got Maul's saber, Vader's saber. You got all sorts of good stuff to and stick with this. If you really do want to go to AR chase stuff, you can look at the Inquisitor lightsaber. Now that sits with a plus three on it, and people are probably go, ah. Oh, 
I've got rid of all the modifier, like the linkage to that modifier. This is fine. And then you rip out a can of escape on that. And then it becomes a four damage. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, you can definitely turn, turn the tide and be unexpected. Um, it does work with the uh, second sister lightsaber that comes in the draft set. Because uh, it's got several modified sides on it. So Guess that. it just adds even more aggressive uh, push through with that deck. Very villain. I love it. I love it. Because, like, obviously, the hero spin would be Dulcy Shields. This is just as ever that villain feel. Just come on, push through that damage going through. And I like it, especially like a lightsaber deck that's just stocked full of lightsabers. You just give me another way to make sure you get the damage when you need it. And it has that kind of like fight dirty aspect to it, where you just because you don't see it coming. And that, I mean, I played you enough. What's fight dirty? What does that do? That's that remove yellow dice. Yeah, yeah, imagine. <laughs> imagine me bringing that up, Parker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel well, like there's uh, some painful memories there. Yeah, um, still sour, man. <laughs> I'd be all right, man. So we're getting a lot of villain love. We're getting a lot of villain love, but I like it. And it's exactly what I would imagine a villain deck to pack. I don't think there's much more to say about it. It's damage out of hand. It's cheap. It's cool. I like it. Nice. Right, so we'll move on to our third and final card. Third and final. Experienced Medic. Nice art. I like it. <laughs> One cost. Yeah, Wrecker got, Wrecker got bumped in the head. <laughs> yeah, cool. So it's one cost, hero red, vent. Heal one damage from one of your characters, then turn a character die to a die showing blank. Side showing blank. Nice. Nice. So it's got a slight mitigation build. It's like a fill medic with less healing, more inhibiting dice kind of effect. Yeah, so I, I like the idea of being able to kind of do both. Um, and I think that that's kind of with some of these other cards in the set. It allows you to... Can can you hear me okay? Sorry, I can I'm still hear you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, but it gives you the ability to, to do one thing that is like less than ideal, but still be able to do something else with the card. Um, so healing one isn't super great for a dollar, but uh, getting that built-in mitigation kind of helps round it out as a card. Oh yeah, I mean if you've got you're healing one, and then Anakin's sitting there with a four for one cost die side, and you go blank, and he has no focus to get that back, it's <laughs> it can almost heal you five damage in that case, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah, that's that's nice, and I mean go along with healing cards. I mean he hero. Red isn't shy of already having more healing cards. So, I mean, just stacking your deck with these, like, I think Running to Abe, is it? The one that can heal one, then two, off of some of the same subtype. So having... Oh, Run to Safety. Yes, yeah, yeah. so one Run to Safety, absolutely, yeah. Run to Safety and this in your deck. I think even with the one heal, it has that... Because you've got other cards that heal, it feels like you've got that kind of threshold where you can just keep going. And then obviously you can turn the dice. Right. Like that. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it, it, it's no Bacta, but at the same time, like with the draft set, we wanted to make sure um, that things are balanced, that they're uh, giving you good like toolbox cards. Um, I think that Aegis and the uh, the guys on the on the creative team doing the the cards did a really good job with. Uh, keeping with the color theme as well, because yeah, yeah. even the three that you've got here with the ulterior motive, um, it has kind of like that cheeky like gambling idea of like, oh, well, if they get the same value, I can get rid of one. Um, the the blue one was just straight blue villain aggro. You get that additional damage, and then with the red, you stick with the healing and the slight mitigation. So I, I think that they've done a really good job with. Um, keeping in line with how the factions are. Yeah, yeah, how totally the captures the essence are. of those type of colors, like Blue Villain being right, yeah. yeah. 100%. They've done a great job. I I don't feel like any of these cards I've just shown is like an instant put into a deck. Like, I don't feel like, oh, it's so good, I'm whacking it in everything. It's like, it's more for the right. people that are, I see this being useful in these situations, and I'm going to dig it for that, you know? like. And I think that's what makes, that's when you know when a card is perfectly balanced, when you can just pair up other cards in your head and be like, 
Yeah, it does works well in that situation. Not so much in that, but I'm still gonna put it in it because it's gonna build work towards the winning condition of this deck. I like it. No, really, yes. really, really, per really perfectly good. balanced, like all things <laughs> should be. <laughs> Look away, you know, Gamora! I, I Look that, away! <laughs> yeah. I, th I think they did a really good job with this because in draft, if you don't get um, like the nice blowout mitigation cards that you're hoping to, to pull from the packs, you still have these to fall back on. Yeah. Like you're not necessarily going to take these over, like, like you're not going to grab something in, out of this set over uh, easy pickings. But if you don't get the easy pickings in your draft cards, you still have that that you can fall back on and your deck isn't just dice. Like, it, it gives you a good way to, to build a more balanced deck in draft. I'm, my head, obviously, I'm trying to encompass everything I can think of where these deck cards can go. But in draft, the door's <laughs> wide open. Like, man, that Cal right, Saber yeah. or something with that villain card in the draft deck. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that two for one into a three, and it's an extra dice. Or Pong's lightsaber, right. even Pong's lightsaber. You know, getting that second dice in and being able to do three damage of it. Ah, oh, nice. Right, yeah. Well, I've, I'm blown away by these cards. I think they're pretty cool, and you've got me super pumped now to see the rest of the set. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really it. excited for it to get out there. Um, I know that they, uh, they're getting the next wave of pre-orders in the next like week or so. Uh, I'm not sure on the specific date. Um, but yeah, I, I think that once mo more of the spoilers come out and uh, people start getting the product in their hands, I think it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, 100%. I know I'm buzzing. <laughs> I have to probably wait a couple of weeks later because I'm in the UK, but I'm still buzzing. I can't oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't tell, me. I know, right? <laughs> well, that, that, well, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. All I can do now is thank you guys for putting the time and effort in this because honestly it is as a community this game could have just went and that was it and that's what i was so afraid of but you guys put so much time and effort into these kind of things yeah it's i think we're all thankful especially in this time of the we're going through right now and right yeah awesome. I, I am really excited for uh, for this set specifically to to drop um, not that I'm not excited about the um, Faltering Legis that's been out for a while. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Like, I'm I'm super excited for what the Renewed Hope Committee is doing. Uh, but even just having, like, these little side fan projects just keep, keep people interested because, like, you, you see somebody or a team working on something um, for this game. Like, why is it so important to them? Is that game really that good? Yeah, because it is. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've come from a background where I don't actually play many card games because I've, I've actually played a lot of miniatures throughout my whole life. But Destiny is one of those games I've just... I can't stop playing. It's so good. It might be the dice because there's a lot of dice in miniature games, but nonetheless, it's, it's Star Wars cards and dice. And yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah and, and I mean, the Star Wars aspect of it, in, like to begin with, is what drew me into it. But this, the mechanic of the game is just really, really solid. Yeah. Well... I'm going to ask you the question now that's probably boiling in everyone's head right now, okay? And I, I'm going to put a spoiler alert out there. So, one, two, turn it off, four, five, right? Spoiler alert's gone. When you do Mandalorian cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. You need to, after that last oh. episode, you need to make this happen, man. <laughs> Dude, I am... I am just reeling from that. I've watched it at least three times in the last 24 hours. <laughs> it's so good, man. Katie right. Sackhoff is just Honestly, changed. anyone who's watching she this, on it. I'm going to say a bit, so turn it off if you don't want to know. But if you want to know about what we feel about Mandalorian, stay on. But, oh my god. <laughs> the fight sequences, yeah. Bo-Katan, uh, the quarries. Dude, she crushed it. Oh, it was just like, they're just nailing every aspect of that show. And, uh, yeah. We need we need you to get yeah. on the line. And get I'm I'm so excited for for season two, man. Like, it just it seems like the first season was kind of going along and it was fun for everybody. But now that you're into season two, it's like, oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at that. Did, like, did you like Clone Wars? Awesome. Did you like Rebels? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> but so live good. action. So good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, mate, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to yeah, come no on problem. and chat about these three awesome new events coming your way. 
So please be sure to check out the Aegis guys and get yourself a kit because these, this is going to be just awesome Destiny fun. And that's all we want. That's all we need. And Parker, mate, all we can do is say thank you because like, obviously you got, you're, a, you're insane, man. The amount of art you just keep pushing out and you keep this community alive, man. Honestly, thank you. I mean, right? I'm, I'm just trying to do my part to keep, keep people interested in the game. I mean, yeah, it's a fun game. I like to play it. I feel like other people would like it too. <laughs> so, yeah. Honestly, yeah, man. But still, thank you very much. And everyone, thank you very much for tuning into this video. Be sure to check out all the other stuff over on the Chimera page because you're going to get a lot more videos coming your way. Obviously, more me, Parker, rolling dice very, very soon. <laughs> Palpatine himself. <laughs> and in the meantime, everybody take care, and as always, may the Force be with you.